Hey everyone, welcome to this course on filtering. The first lesson of this course covers the introduction and fundamentals of filters and demonstrates how to use them effectively in a scenario. More complex aspects of filtering are covered in the second lesson. So what is filtering on IntegraMap? To put it simply, when a bundle of data passes through a route that contains a filter, it must meet the criteria of the filter for it to pass through to the subsequent module. Let's look at this scenario. It watches for incoming emails, uploads an attachment to Dropbox, and sends a Slack message while each route contains a specific filter. It begins with the Gmail Watch Emails module. As always, add a Google connection or choose an existing one here. In order to watch emails only in the inbox, select inbox under the folder option. Under criteria, select only unread emails. Once fetched, the unread emails will be marked as read. And lastly, let's set the maximum number of results to one to work with one email at a time. Okay. On the top route, you can see the Dropbox upload a file module. Add or choose an existing connection. Next, choose the folder to upload the files to, followed by mapping the file name and data elements from the attachments array outputted by the Gmail module under source file. Please note that this will only upload one attachment. If you'd like to upload multiple attachments at a time, use an array aggregator prior to the Dropbox module. You can learn more about it on our course on iterators and array aggregators. Lastly, under advanced settings, you may check this box to overwrite an existing file. Let's leave it as is. Click on the filter icon on the route between the router and the Dropbox module to open up the filter setting. The purpose of this filter is to only allow emails that contain the word honeymoon or holiday in the subject line to pass through. Map the subject element from the preceding Gmail module here. Select the contains text operator from the menu and then type the word honeymoon in this field. Next, add the OR rule, where in the subject line of the email can also contain the word holiday. The setup is the same as above. If the subject line of the Gmail contains either honeymoon or holiday, the bundle of data outputted by the Gmail module will meet the filter's criteria, pass through to the Dropbox module, and the attachment from the email will be uploaded to the selected folder. Moving on. On the bottom row is the Slack Create a Message module. Add or select an existing connection. Select a channel that you want to send the message to. Map the subject and text elements from the Gmail module to the text field to compose the message. You also have the option of manually typing in text if you prefer. Now let's take a look at the filter settings on the route between the router and the Slack Create a Message module. The purpose of this filter is to verify if it has been more than 12 hours since an email was received, and if so, sends a Slack message with the details of the email. To set this up, first map the date element from the Gmail module and select the earlier than date time operator. Please note that the date element also includes the time and that there's no separate element that outputs the time of the email. In the bottom field, use the add hours function to write an expression that will check if it has been more than 12 hours since the email was received. Functions are used to transform the values of elements, such as converting a text to uppercase, trimming a text, converting a date into a different format, etc. Functions are covered and detailed in our course on data manipulation. Going back to this expression here, the add hours function is found under the date and time tab. You then need to map the now variable, which provides the current date and time and type in minus 12 to subtract 12 hours from the current time. The final module is the Slack upload a file module. This module is required to upload email attachments to Slack. Select a Slack channel and under source file, map the file name and data elements from the attachments array outputted by the Gmail module in the respective fields. This will also upload only one attachment. The array aggregator will need to be added before the Slack upload a file module to upload multiple attachments as mentioned earlier. The route between the two Slack modules contains a simple filter. The purpose of this filter is to verify if the email contains an attachment or not. 
Map the attachments data element from the attachments array outputted by the GMA module and select the exists operator from the menu. Finally, set the scenario to execute once a day and select the current date. That's it. The filters are set up. Let's first save the scenario. And now let's test it. As always, choose where to start and manually select an email with the subject line honeymoon or holiday. Now click the run once button to execute the scenario. As you can see, the scenario was executed successfully. If you take a look at the filter inspector on the top route, you can see that the subject line of the email contained the word honeymoon. Therefore, the bundle met one of the filters criteria and the file was uploaded to Dropbox. If you look at the filter inspector of the first filter on the bottom route, you can see that the bundle did not meet the filters criteria and was stopped from proceeding. Now, let's test the scenario again. This time, select an email that was received more than 12 hours ago and execute the scenario once. Here, you can see that the bundle was stopped at the filter on the top route since the subject line did not contain either honeymoon or holiday. You can see that the bundle met the first filters criteria on the bottom route, passed through to the Slack module, and the message was sent to the intended channel. Since the email contained an attachment, the bundle also passed through the second filters criteria on the bottom route and the file was uploaded to Slack. It's important to keep in mind that a filter is attached to the module to its right. If the module's route is unlinked and relinked elsewhere, the filter will remain unchanged. And that brings us to the end of the lesson on the introduction and fundamentals of filters. Here's a quick recap. Filters are used to help you to select bundles that only fit specific criteria. Filters check whether bundles received from the preceding modules fulfill specific conditions or not. If yes, the bundles pass on to the next module in the scenario. If not, their processing is terminated. That concludes the basics of filters. In the next lesson, you will learn how to create a scenario with more advanced filtering. See you in the next lesson.